suddenly people start to steer towards it, you know? And I think there is an underlying feeling that things are changing and that the world is changing and that we need to start thinking differently and looking at things differently. We're gonna try to, try to experiment with farming that uses no equipment and very little fossil fuel input so that way whatever happens in the world economy we're still producing lots of good healthy food. Um, I'm Jeff Gillis and this is my wife Julie and we're just living outside of Rocky Mountain House, Alberta. We've got five acres here. Um, the place was a junkyard when we first moved here at the end of the 1900s. <laughs> After we finished cleaning up all the junk and cars and tires, we had about four acres of lawn that we just didn't know what to do with. And it felt like too good of land to just have it in lawn. So we were looking for another use for it and stumbled onto permaculture and this seems like the thing. And it's very exciting to be doing something that makes so much sense. Um, to be able to teach our kids about where food comes from and work with them and have them work beside us and you know, stage is five and she can like ID things that I would imagine most adults probably couldn't as far as food goes. And it seems like that's, those are the kinds of things we should be teaching our kids about. And if they grow up thinking growing your own food and composting and being careful of the energy you use, if they grow up thinking that's the way it always was, then there is no transition period for them to learn a new lifestyle. They're just already living it. So. Well, our first mission statement was that we wanted to grow all our own food and produce all our own energy for six people on five acres, which is completely doable, but realistically, there's a lot of food that other people produce that's probably better or different than what we have here. So it's not about producing all of our own food and owning it. It's more just about, you know, making a contribution to what you consume and then we will sell stuff to other people or trade it and we'll trade stuff back from them. We collected 130 tractor tires and put them into this pattern. So this gives us 1,200 square feet of raised bed area and it didn't cost us anything. And then these tires get really warm in the sun so they actively heat the soil. And again, the closer you can get the soil to 25 degrees Celsius, the more productive it is. So there's eight big arms of the galaxy here. So just to keep things straight, we made each arm one guild. So a guild is three different plants that grow well together, like corn, beans, and squash is this guild behind me. So the corn uses a lot of nitrogen and grows up tall. The beans fix nitrogen into the soil and they need something to climb up, which is the corn. So the two of them work well together. And then squash is a ground cover reduces moisture loss, reduces weeds, which is a benefit to the peat or the corn and beans. And the three of them together form a complete protein in your body. So here's one of our forest gardens that we have planted. A normal forest produces more than a grassland, so a food forest produces more than a garden in the ground. And once you replace all the levels of a forest, your tall canopy and high trees, tall bushes, low bushes, ground cover, viney species. And once you replace all those seven components of a forest with edible products now, you're getting the advantage of that high productivity and it's all food it's producing. So the system tends to take care of itself because it mulches itself, cycles its own nutrients and water and everything. So there's very little work in it compared to a garden, yet you're producing 10 times the amount of food. And, um, lamb quarters, yes. which are entirely edible on every level. And it's, it is definitely a weed, like as you can see, it really wants to like do the things that they classify as being a weed. Um, but when it's entirely edible, it only makes sense that we should be eating something that grows in such abundance. You know, we don't have to plant it, we don't have to do any kind of maintenance, it just grows and that seems to make a lot of sense. I told that to somebody the other day, they were so excited. 
to know that they could eat something that they didn't plant and that they always wanted to try and get rid of and you don't have to. So. Well, Tommy Soul Projects is our company name. The projects we have on the go right now are building the worm composting bins and selling those and uh, selling soil amendments and topsoil mixes for your garden. So if you're installing a new garden, instead of trying to scrounge up whatever soil you can find around, we can just bring in a pre-mixed soil blend that's really rich and fertile and has all these amendments added into it. And that way you're really likely to get a really nice garden your first try. So that'll always help, I think, in, in moving the movement forward is if we can make this really easy for people to have really good success on the first time. Of why would you ever pay attention to how much your toaster uses? It's like, whatever, my toaster works, cool. I'm gonna pay the bill to make my toaster work and that's all I care about. And that's where we're all at, you know? It's just like so easy to just like. But when they say like, you know, well, there's the downsides of solar energy, it'll never power the world and it's up. And that's, that's true. That's true, yeah. It's way less energy, but then as soon as you're into it and start paying attention to what electricity you use, you inevitably use less and less. And it's just like, oh, well, solar did work because then we just figured out how to live on that instead of just applying a new, like, renewable energy to today's usage. Taking the Verge PDC was just a way to be able to um, connect with more people for myself to fully understand what we were doing, um, being that Jeff had taken his PDC before I did. and. Uh, just to be able to connect all the dots, put everything together. Um, the community built during the PDC was just phenomenal, just to be able to be there for two weeks to meet people who are like-minded and you walk away like your family and you now know you have people that understand what you're doing and where you're coming from. And I called it like summer camp for adults. You know, I got to leave the kids at home, have two weeks on my own, I didn't have to cook any meals. And I just got to be like totally like, you know, surrounded by that kind of environment that we're wanting to create out here. So it was life-changing overall. <laughs>I think if you were a city family that was interested in this but not quite sure if you want to make the plunge and spend that money to get set up or that extra time to get set up, but if you could come out here for a week or two first and learn about the different systems, learn about different ideas you could do and ways that you can do it at zero cost if you want, and try out the compost toilets, try out a bit of gardening work taking care of animals and just hanging out here without TV for a week or two. Maybe by the end of that, people would either say, that's not the lifestyle for me, or they might be totally impressed and think it's way more fulfilling than they ever could have expected. And then now they have the tools and skills and the support network to go home and make the change themselves. You know, we're doing things differently than traditional and conventional gardening and farming that make people kind of like raise a few eyebrows. But if you can see something that's different working successfully, then why wouldn't more people want to do that or look at it or get excited about it? And um, it's changing.